Guys, today is all about butt wink. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today's video is all about butt wink. I wanna talk about first what it is, if it is a bad thing basically in terms of performance, and then the injury risk, whether or not there's a true injury risk when you see butt wink happen. So first and foremost, let's talk about what it is. I'm gonna have Darren face that way, and he's gonna go into a squat, and we're gonna define butt wink. So we're gonna see in this position, he has a natural curve in his low back. This is a neutral spinal position, and then he's going to squat down. And I want you to watch what happens to his low back pelvis relationship. So he's gonna squat down, and about past there, the pelvis turns under, and that's the winking action that we're talking about. Let's come back up just a little bit right there. Now slowly come back down again. So this wink, butt wink, is the action of the pelvis being pulled under the body. That's called a posterior pelvic tilt. Now, when we're uh, talking about the pelvis, we automatically talk about the low back as well because there's an instant connection between the two. As far as if one is flexing, the low back is going to flex as well. They both work hand in hand. So come back up and let's see one more um, butt wink all the way down. The idea behind it is to understand first and foremost, when is it occurring and to what degree is it occurring? So once it gets past parallel, squats all the way down. Now this is not a ton of butt wink. This is a small amount, but Darren, from a performance standpoint, tell me what you've learned about butt wink in your own lifting career. So definitely I lose a lot of power when I'm, when I'm going into, a, especially a deep, a deep clean, I lose a lot of power. I don't, I don't feel like I can come straight up uh, out of the out of a heavy clean. Gotcha. So when you've experienced butt wink, it basically drains your power yes. from your body. I feel like it's crushing me. There you go. So a lot of times when we have the conversation on butt wink, people instantly want to go to the idea that it is going to be harmful from an injury perspective. But in reality, when we're talking about a healthy athlete, first and foremost, we have the idea of performance and whether or not our technique quality is leading to better lifts. And we can tell that whenever the butt is pulled under, the glutes pull under like this, it's going to change that orientation of the spinal column right here. And whenever, and if even, can you relax even more? So relax. Whenever you have flexion movement of the low back right here, you're going to decrease the ability to stabilize and pressurize the core, which when you're having a lot of weight on your back or on your chest in the clean, it's going to affect your ability to then therefore get the lift all the way up. Now, if Darren is just resting in the bottom of a deep squat and there's a little bit of round in his back, that is not a big deal because we don't have a lot of load. But whenever we're talking about lifting mechanics, the, uh, the actual position of your back and how you're using your spine matters to an even greater degree. Come on up. Now, from an injury perspective, here's why. Whenever we're talking spinal mechanics, I want you to understand the simple equation. Power equals force times velocity. And the reason that's so important to understand is because when power is derived at the spine, that is often what occurs to lead to injury. So let's talk about what that would look like as far as butt wink. Here's our spinal um, column in our pelvis. This is a model, new model from Dynamic Disc Designs. When you squat down and everything stays in that neutral position, you have a lot of load straight down through the spine and we have just straight compression on the spine. And we understand through a lot of our different studies that we have done, research studies, that the spine is very resilient to injury when it is maintained in a relative neutral position. Now, I say relative neutral because neutral is not one static position, but it's a small range. So a little bit of motion either way is still within the neutral position and you are able to maintain um, injury resiliency. So your spine stays safe. Well, what happens is that when you squat down, that butt wink is basically the pelvis turning under the body. So we're flexing at the low back and you can see that if we draw a line straight down as far as the load, which is on your chest, we have compression in that over time, you can see that small little red dot right there. That is the action of a disc bulge. So this is mimicking what happens, the exact mechanism that creates a disc bulge, which is flexion movement under load. So what do we have? We have 
load, which is the weight of our, the barbell on our back. And we have velocity because we have movement. So when we have load, force, and movement, velocity, you have increased power. So if someone squats down and maintains a relative neutral position, you have minimal power derived at the spine. What happens is that if you invite movement into the picture, the more movement that occurs, the more repetition that it occurs, the greater frequency that it's happening, the increased risk you have for eventually developing uh, a disc injury. That is the mechanism by which it happens. Now let's talk obviously about the duration at which this would happen. If you see butt wink one time, is it automatically gonna blow a disc out? No, it's an extreme exaggeration. But a lot of the people that we're seeing this with that are squatting astrograss, they're not just doing it once, they're doing it time and time again. So the greater frequency that it happens, the greater exposure that you have to that power being derived at the spine, just the increased risk you have for eventually developing this type of injury. And everyone's spine's a little bit different. Someone's spine may be sort of like a willow branch that bends very easily, where someone else may have a spine that's much thicker, like a, a harder tree branch. So everyone's rate of developing a disc injury is also going to be very different, but the mechanism remains the same. You have load through the spine, movement, and then exposure. Over time, that is the mechanism that eventually creates a disc injury. So if we're talking about butt wink, it is something that from a performance standpoint is not ideal because it loses or it, create, it causes you to lose your pressure within your core and then you're going to have decreased performance and from an injury standpoint the more movement that occurs the less ideal it is because you are increasing injury risk so we have to understand that now let's talk about can we modify butt wink first and foremost let's just play around with your squat stance so i'm going to have darren take more of a um let's face that way more of a shoulder width stance. So sort of a, a narrower stance for him and squat down as deep as possible. And I want you guys to watch his hip and back relationship. So squat all the way down, so right here, right past there, that's when he's gonna butt wink right there. Now, what I'm gonna have him do is take a little bit of a wider stance. So come all the way back up and take your normal stance, just a little bit wider. Now watch his pelvis. So he's gonna go all the way down there you go. So he's able to maintain a more upright chest in a better neutral relative position of his low back just by changing up his stance width. And here's why this happens. If we look over at the model right here, the amount of movement that you have of your femur within your hip socket can be manipulated in some people based on the angle of how your femur is attaching. So for some people going straight forward, you sort of run out of room within the hip socket and your femur will basically butt up against your pelvis, acetabulum or hip socket. And the only thing left to move if you wanna continue your squat depth is the pelvis gets pulled underneath. So for some people just taking a stance that's a little bit wider and going out to the side, now there's a little bit more room for that femur to move while your low back and pelvis can maintain that orientation. Here's how you can test for that. Darren, go on your back real quick. From right here, if I take Darren straight forward, let's uh, straighten this knee out, you can see he can only go about this far before his pelvis wants to move. But if I take him out to the side just a little bit wider, he can go a little bit further knee towards chest, showing that your stance width can have a dramatic effect on your depth and the ability to squat while maintaining the integrity and the relationship of your back and pelvis. So that's one thing if you have butt wink, look at your stance width and see if manipulating that can allow you to squat deeper or just to the same depth while maintaining uh, that orientation and position. Now, second thing you can do is look at your ankle mobility because the greater ankle mobility you have, the further you can squat down without compensations up the chain. Now, if you've been working your ankle mobility like crazy using some of the other tricks and, and tips I've given, and it's just not improving, another thing that can be helpful, especially for my weightlifters out there, anyone going into the weight room, is using a weightlifting shoe. So let's do this. I'm gonna have Darren go grab your weightlifting shoes. Let's pop those on real quick. And we're going to see what his squat looks like now that he's given himself a little assistance for ankle mobility by wearing a heeled shoe that's gonna prop his foot up a little bit. All right, so now that Darren has his weightlifting shoes on, let's again look from a side view and see how he can uh, squat while maintaining that position of his low back. 
So squat all the way down. Let's go with your normal squat stance. So we already saw how deep you could squat barefoot. Now, if we have ankles or uh, weightlifting shoes on, let's see what that ankle assistance looks like. So again, looking at that back, there you go. Even deeper than before with a more upright chest position before that butt wank occurs. Now, if he were to completely were to relax at the very bottom, again, now we have a lot of lumbar flexion way outside of that neutral range. This is not going to be ideal. So we don't want to bottom out in that bottom. Again, you only want to squat to a depth where you're maintaining that relative neutral position because this is going to not only decrease your injury risk, but it's going to put you in a position where you can lift the max amount of weight. You're going to increase your potential performance by maintaining integrity of your spine and the stability that's then going to uh, basically enhance your distal athleticism, the amount of force and power that you can produce. So great job, Darren. Now, the last thing we need to talk about, what are some of the myths as far as butt weight goes? Hamstring flexibility is the big one because a lot of people will say, oh, you have butt wink, stretch your hamstrings. Let's talk about why that's wrong. Your hamstrings are what's called a biarticulate muscle, meaning they attach up here on the pelvis and then they run all the way down here to the back side of the knee. So they cross two joints, the hips and the knees. Now, when you squat, your knee is not staying straight because in this position, let's say you were doing an RDL. As your knee stays straight, the hamstrings are lengthening the entire time. When you squat, your hip and your knee are both bending at the exact same rate, meaning that the hamstrings are not changing in length significantly. They're shortening on one end and they're lengthening on the other end. So the entire muscle is staying the relative same length. So if you had tight hamstrings, it's tight here and they're tight here. They're not changing in length. So it would not be something that would create excessive pelvis movement only at the very bottom. So you can stretch your hamstrings all you want and it's not gonna change butt weight. You need to look at first the hip anatomy and that can be changed with width sometimes or look all the way down here at your ankles. Improve your ankle mobility or and or wear a pair of weightlifting shoes if you suffer from a lot of butt weight and do so to where you can squat to an acceptable depth while maintaining the number one most important thing of lifting, maintaining that neutral, relative neutral spine. Again, this is not one static position, but a range. We don't want to lose this. Spinal mechanics matter. And if you have excessive butt wink that pulls your spine out of that neutral range and pulls it into flexion, over time, we're just increasing our injury risk and decreasing our potential performance. So there you go, guys. Long video all on the definitive guide to understanding butt wink. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. Um, again, thank you guys so much for checking out my YouTube series on these. And uh, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the videos that I'm putting out. Until next week, guys. Happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people that